what they call the Palominos. And Palominos have quite a history. You know, the history of my own Palomino began right here at this ranch. If I hadn't gone through that gate a few years back, I'd never have gotten my pal Trigger. Some spurs, some spurs, you gotta have some spurs. Then you'll be living Western style. Some boots, some boots, you got to have some boots. Then you'll be living Western style. Then, of course, you got to give that old <laughs> You'll be wild and woolly if you do. <laughs> some space, some space, you got to have some space. Then you'll be living Western style. No peddlers or agents. like they don't put out welcome mats for people like us here, so we'll fool them. We'll ride in like a lady and a gentleman. <laughs> Ever think what kind of palominas we could raise if we could get a few colts sired by him? What do you think I've been thinking? Oh, what are you doing here? Why, we work here, so does all the rest of the boys. About two years now. You want a job? I'll ask Mr. Kendrick. Well, no thanks, Bob. I'll ask him myself. It's about something else, though. Well, he's pretty busy right now. He's showing the sovereign. Well, that's a show I'd like to see. Well, step right up. There's the front row. <laughs> sovereign, please. Please. I'm trying to put on a show. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, lady. The gentleman's busy. I said, come on. Sovereign. <laughs> I guess that'll be all for today, Dad. You can start the dance. Yeah. Folks, mount up for the square dance. Everybody over in the other corral. Bob, climb down out of there. Get the boys together. Let's have some music. Well, Mr. Kendrick. Could I speak to you a minute? No. I'm speaking to you. What's the idea of busting up the sovereign's performance in there? Can't you control that... that mule? Well, I... Oh, forget it. This is a party. Everybody's supposed to have a good time. Now, get over there in that other corral. Yeah. This time, see if you can't hang out of that marine. Follow the leaders, ladies and gents, and promenade the hall. Couple out to the center of the ring, the rest ride on one more turn around. That's a nice mare. What's her name? Lady. This is Golden Sovereign. Yes, I know. To the center of the ring, the rest ride on one more turn. <laughs> Seems to be quite a romance. That's what I'm here for. To ask about a marriage. Ask what? Marriage. Oh, boy. <laughs> You'll have to ask my father. Ask who? Ask my father and take a right. Ask me why? About a marriage. I want your permission to, uh... You want to marry my daughter? No, the Golden Sovereign. You mean to say you want to marry a horse? You must be plumb local. All right, up and face your partner. Well, that's the end of the show. Come on, let's but you don't understand, Mr. Kendrick. You're doing too, and I don't. I'm speaking for ladies. She's a fine mare, and the Golden Sovereign's a great stallion. Between the two of them, we ought to get the finest Palomino colt in the whole country. Correct, eh? Yeah. Who gets your colt? You? Cross the hall. Well, yes, but I'm willing to. You may be willing, but I ain't. 
I already own the finest palomino in the country, and that's the Severn. And he ain't for stud. Not for a million dollars, he ain't. Does that answer your question, stranger? Yes, that answers my question. Yeah. Looks like it answers our question, too. Maybe. Once more, meet your honey in the center of the ring and cross the hall. Ladies, go right and just go in. Now you listen to me, young fella. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Mr. Ah, oh, forget it. You're lucky I didn't throw you off the ranch. What's the matter? Steady, boy. Oh, Mrs. and Mrs. Roy. Roy Rogers? Thank you. We've met. Yes, lady introduced us. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. I think it was sovereign. <laughs> Say, how'd you get along with my father? <laughs> That's what I thought. At least I didn't get shot for crime. <laughs> I'm pleased to have met you, Miss Kendrick. Thank you. Well, boys, I guess I'd better be shoving along. Oh, we're having well, sorts of hurry, Roy. Oh, yeah. We ain't seen you for two years. Good gosh, yes, two whole years, Roy. Can't you at least wait around and have supper with us? It is all right if he has supper with us, isn't it, Miss Susan? Of course it is, Bob. But we're all having supper with Mr. Scoville at the El Dorado Club. I'm sure it'll be all right, however, if you'd like to come along. You uh, might pop that question again to my father. Maybe you'll be in a little better mood tonight. How about it, lady? <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host, Mr. Brett Scoville. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight we have with us a friend and neighbor, a man who, I must confess, raises better horses than even I do myself. Take a bow, Mr. Kendrick. And now we have something special in the way of entertainment. The boys from the Golden Horse Ranch tell me that they have a guest with them who they would like to have favor us with a song. It's all yours, Mr. Rogers. Whose idea was this? Oh, Bob just thought. That was idea. Just for old time's sake, Roy. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Scoville. Oh, but... come on along. Maybe I can help you over the rough spot. Anyway, I'll try. Let's give him a big hand. All bets down. Here we go. Better keep your fingers crossed, Mr. Scoville. I feel hot enough firecracker tonight. 
You just watch that 26 black. Hey, 26 black. That's my number, little old 26 black. What did I tell you, Mr. Scoble? <laughs> I got a hunch I'm going to walk home pushing my win into the wheelbarrow. Well, you make yourself at home, and I'll go get you a wheelbarrow. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Kendrick. Yeah? Uh, could I speak to you a minute before you get started? What do you mean before you get started? I am started. <laughs> well, you didn't understand me out at the ranch. I mean about a colt from your stallion. Now, you listen to me, young fella. I'm telling you for the last time. If the sovereign sires any coats, they're going to be my coats. Out of my own stock. And another thing. Hey, 26 black. That's my number, little old 26 black. Sorry, Mr. Kendrick, you didn't have a bet up that time. By golly, I did. That's your fault, you young whippersnapper. If you didn't stand there blabbing your big mouth, I got a notion to take you apart right now. What's the trouble, Mr. Kendrick? What's the trouble? You know what he just done? No. Get out of here. Beat it before I lose my temper. You better leave, Rogers. Yeah. Just a minute. I Mr. said Kid you better leave, Rogers. I said I'm not leaving until I get something George, said. Ed. I came a long way. Oh, Mr. Rogers. Rogers is leaving. You heard what Mr. Scoville said, didn't you? We're going outside, chum. Let's go. I'm sorry, Mr. Kenneck. If you don't mind, I'll go out on my own steam. Looks like we got in our own town. I am the Rancho Grande, I got on Navy Via. I am the Rancherita, Gaelic Grimada Sia, Gaelic Grimada Sia. They boy up there, two skirts on it. Como los yus del ranchero, se los comienzo de landa, se los acabo de cuero. I love to roam out yonder, out where the buffalo wander. <laughs> Free as the eagle flying, I'm roping and I'm tying, I'm roping and the tying. Give me my ranch and my cattle Far from the great city's rattle Give me a big herd to battle For I just love herding cattle I am the Rancho Grande, I got old Davy V. Ah, 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 ah. Dad, do you realize what time it is? Nope, been too busy. Oh, waiter. Yes, sir. Check, please. It's all been taken care of. I'm the host this evening. Well, that's right. Nice of you. It don't seem fair. Take your hospitality and your money, too. But, Dad, you didn't. Oh, didn't I, though? <laughs> Don't let that worry, Miss Kendrick. We always let him win the first time. He'll be back. Can't understand why Scoville ain't here with that mare. Eh, I guess he got tied up over at the club or something. There he goes again. I wonder what's ailing that critter. Must be a coyote out there. <laughs> what's the matter? Quiet down. Yeah, cut it out.
back to the ranch. Well, you don't have to tear the house down. What do you mean, waking me up in the middle of the night? He's gone, Gabby. He's gone. He got away. Uh, I woke up and he wasn't there. What are you talking about? Who wasn't there? I'm the Sovereign. What? What's the matter? What's the matter? Was it your dad blasted young idiot? Why do you suppose I have you sleep with that animal? How could he... How could he get out? He snuck out. Well, he's liable to meet that wild black stallion. Better telephone the neighbors. We'll need help. I'll get some clothes on. Well, don't stand there like a wooden engine. Get the boys to saddle up. They're saddling. Give me the scoble ranch. Do you realize that I've lost the only chance I'll ever have to? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll answer. Hello? Yeah? Oh, hello, Mr. Kendrick. He did? Why, certainly. Why, you bet. We'd be right over to help you. We'd be right over. Not, Miss Kendrick. Well, let's get going. We better try that other canyon. We cover more territory if we split up. We'll take this side of the ridge. up again. They're headed for the valley. All right, let's take a look.
Running with a bunch in the back country. I've seen him a couple of times before. He's going to kill Golden Sovereign. Oh, he is. Guy. Drop it. Susan probably found the shovel. Why did you do it? Well, I didn't shoot him, Miss Kendrick. I heard a shot, and as I rode in, there were three men leaving. As a matter of fact, we shot at each other. Boy. What is it, son? Who done it? I know how you feel, Mr. Kendrick, but I Shut have... Shut up! I wouldn't be too hasty, Mr. Kendrick. I've known Roy a long time. Get away from me, Bob. This is one thing I can take care of myself. I told your daughter what happened, Mr. Kendrick. I know what happened. You wanted a colt from the sovereign, didn't you? I wouldn't give it to you, so you steal him. You steal him in the middle of the night and you shoot him. Because you, you wanted your mare to have the sovereign's only foal. I ought to kill you away. Right. We'll let the law handle Mr. Rogers. Take him to town, boys. Miss Susan, I, well, me and the boys have known Roy for over 10 years, and he just ain't the kind of a guy that would shoot a horse. Why, all he's ever known his whole life was horses. And once I knock a guy spinning for mistreating stock, one of these days you're going to find out you were wrong in suspecting him. Maybe so, Bob. You the defendant? Yes, sir. 
The complaint states that you were forcibly ejected from the El Dorado Club last night following an argument with Mr. Kendrick. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You admit trying to make a deal with Mr. Kendrick for his horse, Golden Sovereign, to sire a coat by a mare owned by yourself? Yes, sir. I did try to make a deal with him. And a few hours following the quarrel, Mr. Kendrick and his party found the horse, Golden Sovereign, dead where you were encamped for the night. The animal had been killed by one gunshot, and you were found standing beside it with one cartridge discharged from your revolver. Is that true? Yes, sir, but I didn't shoot his horse. I heard a shot. Of course you heard a shot. His own shot. Just a moment, Gabby. I'll set trial for a week from Monday, and your bail will be $1,000. Well, I haven't got $1,000. That is in cash. Lock him up, Sheriff. Your Honor, I think I can arrange bail for the defendant. What do you got to do with this? Strictly a matter of business, Mr. Kendry. Can I speak to the defendant in a minute? Yes, go ahead. Law, you call it. He ought to be thrown in jail and the key thrown away. Quiet, Gabby. Sit down. Just sign here and everything will be taken care of. Well, what is this about my outfit and stock? Oh, just a sort of a guarantee. You can't expect me to shell out a thousand dollars without some security. You want to get out of here, don't you? Sure, but... All right, then. Sign there. Where do you think you're going with that horse? What do you mean? She's my horse. Kind of forgetful, ain't you? I got $1,000 tied up in this outfit. What are you trying to get away with? I gave you a mortgage on my stuff, but there's nothing that says you can take possession of it. That's what you think. I'm holding it till I get my 1000 plus the fees for putting up the dough. The fee's going to be this little mare. <laughs> you or nobody else gets this little mare. Don't play tough, young fella. The law's on my side, so beat it. I'll beat it, but lady here goes with me. Oh, no, she don't. What are you doing? Hey, let me out of here. Hey, help, somebody! Hey, let me out of here, will you? Let's get this out of here. There he goes. Stop him, somebody. Hey, help! Help! Hey, stop that guy. Sorry we're late. That's all right, Buff. We had to watch our chance to get out of town. Here's some drugs. Thanks. What's going on in town? Well, there's a lot of hard feelings, Roy. I think your best bet is to stay away until things blow over. That is, if you want to keep this mayor. Well, I do. Has the sheriff got a posse out yet? Oh, two of them. Wallace said he's going to get that mayor if he has to trail you clear across the state. <laughs> He'll have to trail me clear across several states. He's already got over $1,000 worth of my stuff. He gets this little mare, he's gonna have to bring me back on the end of a rope. <laughs> Where you headed, Roy? Don't know exactly, Shug, but I'm gonna put a lot of miles between me and here before daylight. <laughs> well, fellas, I guess I better get started. We gotta be getting back, too, before the old man misses us. You're right, Shug. Well, so long, Roy, and good luck. So long, Bob. Yeah, a lot of Thanks good for everything, guys. boys. Bye now. So long. Hey, so long, Roy. sack of oats? Yes, sir. Okay, one full sack of oats, a feeding of hay, that old saddle back there, and $20 cash. Is that a deal? 
I paid a lot of money for this saddle. It's the best I can do. Besides, I don't get much call for these fancy jobs. That's my offer. You take it or leave it. I'll take it. All right. Maybe you could tell me where I could get a little work around here someplace. This time of the year? Nobody hires hands in the winter. Especially strangers that come drifting in out of the snow. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. Only the ranchers around here got enough to do to take care of the local hands. You come around the spring, maybe after the first rains, somebody might be able to use you. It's a long time till spring. No, I can only spare one feeding. You'll find a bale of hay open out there in the shed. I'll be out in a minute. Okay, thanks. Lie down and make yourself at home. I'll be with you in a jiffy, lady. Riley. What's up? Somebody just closed the barn door. Wally? Didn't look like him. We better find out. We've been in a lot better places than this lady. On the other hand, we've been in a lot worse. Be dry anyway. Mr. Walling? Be with you in a minute. Got a mare in full. Had to get her in out of the rain. This looked like the only place I could find. Did you ask Wally? Who's Wally? This is his barn. Ain't I seen you somewhere before? Looks like the guy that shot the Kendrick Stallion. I didn't shoot the Kendrick Stallion. Your name Rogers? Yes. And I wouldn't get caught in El Dorado County if I was you. I thought I smelled smoke. Who built that fire? I did. What's the idea? You want to burn the barn down? Says he's just passing by. Says he's got a mare in full. He named Rogers. The fellow that killed Golden Sovereign last summer. We don't want any horse killers around here. Now put that fire out and beat it. I can't leave now, Mr. Walling. I'm in a spot. You bet you're in a spot. They want you for horse killing, assault and battery, bail jumping, and stealing mortgage property. You're a fugitive. And you're lucky I don't hold you for the Eldorado Sheriff. Now beat it. I'm not leaving. Not now. Not while it's raining. I'll be glad to work off the mayor's keep, Mr. Walling. At any job you say. Do you think I'd give a job to a horse killer? Throw him out, boys. I'll get the mayor. 
You leave that mare right where she is, and I mean it. Yes, and I mean it, too. Now you beat it. You fellas don't seem to understand. I'm staying. <laughs> There's clean sacks over there. Where? In the tack room. Well, hurry up. Let's get it. Give me those blankets, will you? Take it easy, will you? Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Now, look, take it easy, Thomas. Step over that way. She's still pretty wet. Cover up over there, will you? That's a nice girl. Time to be here, and here he is. You're kind of quick on the trigger, son. What are you going to name him, Roy? I just did. It's Trigger. Sometimes it's tough. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> you better go on off and play. Go on.
boy. the toughest thing I ever had to do in my life, Trigger. But she's hurt too bad. There just isn't anything else I can do. You understand that, don't you, boy? Trigger. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's tough. You've got to take the breaks the way they come. Life is sort of like gambling. You can't always win. All bets down. Away we go. Double O. Place your bets, folks. All bets down. Place your bets, folks. Yes. We'll close at the same time. Come in, Mr. Kenry. Sit down. Well, how'd it go tonight? About as usual. I didn't bring any money with me. I suppose you'll take my OU. I've never refused you yet, have I? I'll take care of them one of these days. I know you will, Mr. Kendrick. I know you're good for them. Well, how's everything at the ranch? All right, I guess. Let me get the door for you. Why don't you drop out of my place sometime? I have a few new horses I'd like to show you. Looks to me like you've done all right for yourself since you opened this place. <laughs> Not bad. It's a necessary sideline. Ranch is my real interest. I'm getting a little crowded, though. I need more land. There's a lot of it around here. Mr. Kendrick, have you ever considered selling your ranch? Selling it? Yes. Me sell the Golden Horse Ranch? You're crazy. Well, that place has been in my family for four generations. Oh, I'm sorry. But I'd heard that you hadn't taken quite as much interest in it lately since you, uh... Since you lost the Golden Sovereign, and I just... I still that. raise the finest palominos in this country. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Good night, Mr. Kendrick. Good night. Better luck next time. It's a miracle. His name's Trigger, Mr. Kendrick. What are you doing? I brought him to you. That thing? He is the Golden Sovereign's coat. Dad, I was so worried I didn't... Good evening, Miss Kendrick. Get out of here. Take that animal with you. I said he was yours, Mr. Kendrick. Seems to me you're taking pretty long chances, Mr. Rogers. You are a fugitive, aren't you? I'm willing to face whatever anyone's got against me. That's why I came back. I figured you were still convinced that I shot Golden Sovereign. So I thought the least I could do was raise his colt and deliver him to you. That? His colt? 
I wouldn't give that half-breed stable room. All right, Mr. Kendrick. I've taken the lot off of you, and now I'm going to have my say. Shut up and get out of here and take your half-breed with you. I will. And someday, this half-breed, as you call him, is going to make you eat those words one by one. He's going to show up any horse you ever own, including your golden empress. Yeah, if you ever get out of jail, satisfy a judgment of the El Dorado County Court against Mr. Roy Rogers for the sum of $150 owed to Mr. Henry L. Wallace. Under such authority is now offered at auction this Palomino Colt. Go ahead, Al. All right, all right, all right. Who'll start the bidding? Bid, bid, bid. What am I offered for this beautiful Palomino Colt? What do I hear? What am I bid? $82.65. $82.65. Who'll give 90? Do I hear 90? 90. $90, I give 90. Who'll give 100? How do you like that? Some guy bids $90 for a half-breed nag that ain't even worth 10 cents. It's not even 10 cents? Isn't he the son of gold and sovereign? That makes him just half a horse, which means he ain't worth his feed. Who wants half a horse? $100. I bid $100. $100, Mr. Kendrick bids $100. $150. What are you bidding for? Fine. $150. Who'll give two? $200. $200, $200. No use, boys. We can't even make 150. What are we going to do now? Nothing. Roy just lost trigger. Do I hear 250? Who'll say 250? 250. Dad, for only half a horse? Well, I wasn't aiming on going any higher. I couldn't let Scoville get him, could it? 350. 350, Mr. Scoville. 350. Do I hear 400? 400. $400. I got 400. Who'll say 450? 450, do I hear 450? Are you all through at 400? Are you all done? Going once, going twice, sold to the man in the dark hat for $400. I got my money. Rogers gets some change back and the stranger gets a nice horse. Looks like everybody's happy. Thanks a lot, Sheriff. Oh! 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 Thanks a lot, fellas. Always glad to help a stranger. Who is he, Dad? I don't know and I don't care. All I know is he just bought himself a half-breed nag for $400. Yes, and Mr. Rogers just lost his horse. I suppose that makes you happy. You bet. Let's go, kid. Uh, Dad, uh, there's some things I want to do. I mean, some things I have to pick up. Uh, would you mind getting the groceries? My shopping won't take long. Okay, I'll meet you at the store. Yes, sir. And I don't mean a week from next Wednesday. Yes, sir. your money, Rogers. You've got a legal right to the difference between what you owed Wallace and what your horse sold for. My luck sure has changed. Not only do I get out of jail, but I get paid for it. Who fixed it? <laughs> well, what difference does it make? The case has been dropped and you're out. Goodbye, Rogers. I hope I won't see you again under these circumstances. You won't under any circumstances. What'd you find out, Bob? No luck, Roy. That guy that bought Trigger lives in Springdale. And all the boys could find out for sure is that his name is Davis and that he trucked Trigger out of town this afternoon. So, now what? When is the next train to Springdale? Not till 1.40 in the morning. 
I'll be on it. In the meantime, I think I'll get a bite to eat and catch myself some sleep. Well, thanks a lot, Bob, and tell the rest of the boys goodbye for me. Something, Susan? Hmm? When you sing like that, I kind of get over being mad that you were her daughter instead of her son. <laughs> Dad, look at that. You know something? Uh. Son couldn't do this for you. Uh huh. You got something on your mind. What do you want this time? Dad, I've been thinking. If Roy didn't shoot the Sovereign, you've done that boy a terrible injustice. I ain't never done nobody no injustice. He's a horse killer and a skunk. As far as I'm concerned, he can stay in jail till he rots. But he's getting out of jail, didn't you know? He's what? I'll call the sheriff, but... Wait a minute. Did you have anything to do with that, Susan? Well, in a way, yes, I did. What do you mean, in a way? Dad, in the first place, there was never any actual proof that he did it. Proof enough for me. I'll call Judge Ellis. You can't. I told the judge you wanted to drop the charge. You told him what? Dad, you had Roy arrested on purely circumstantial evidence. You took away everything that boy owned and made a fugitive of him. It isn't fair. Well, he had to come to Well, personally, I don't think he ever shot the sovereign. Dad, if he had, he wouldn't have come back here to give you that coat. You're making a Fool of yourself. Susan! You ain't never talked like that to your father before. Dad, I'm sorry. But you don't know what this is doing to you. Your hatred of Roy has become an obsession with you. You're so embittered, it's dominating your whole life. Dad, you aren't the same anymore. Your interests have changed. You've neglected the ranch. You've gambled too much. You... Maybe so, Susan. Maybe so. Oh, Dad, I'm sorry. I wouldn't hurt you for anything in the world. Forgive me.
Come in. Hey, son, have you got any baggage to go to the depot? No, nah, this is all the baggage I got. Well, you better get going because one forty's due here in a couple of minutes. I'll make it all right. Well, don't say I didn't tell you. Cool off, bud. This ain't your horse anymore. It belongs to our boss over there. That's right. I just... But I thought that... It's a long story. Come over to the office and I'll tell you all about it. Get that horse back to the ranch and keep him out of sight. Come on over. Why all the red tape, Mr. Scoville? If you want a trigger, why didn't you buy him yourself at the auction? Because I didn't want anybody to know I had him until the proper time. Gabby Kendrick's been carrying off the honors around here too long. I spotted Trigger as a fine animal and figured on training him to beat anything that Kendrick had. That's what I had hoped to do, Mr. Scoville. Kendrick called Trigger everything but a horse, and I wanted to make him eat those words. <laughs> Maybe he can yet. What do you mean? How would you like to go to work for me and take on the job of training Trigger? It's a deal. Sounds like the next best thing to own it in myself. Son, you got yourself a job. Thanks. Quit gambling. 
That's a laugh. We were better. Uh, oh, shucks. <laughs> Mr. Kendrick, you're a sporting man. I'll make you a sporting proposition. I have your IOUs for half the value of your ranch. Is that right? Yeah. I'll make you a deal. Double or nothing. If you win, you get your IOUs back. If I win, I get your ranch. You mean you let... No, I couldn't do that. That wouldn't be giving you a fair shake. I'm willing. I'm willing to run any horse I've got against any horse that you've got. Winner takes everything. Well, you ask for it. It's a deal. Okay, partner. Yeah. <laughs> well, glad you could come by. Yeah, thanks. And I'll see you Monday. Yeah. Susan. It's all right. Yeah, that's that's How's she doing? Let her by the minute. 48 seconds flat. Yeah, I don't think we got nothing to worry about. I just come from Scoville's ranch. <laughs> you never did see such a terrible bunch of nags as he's got. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do this time? Getting better every run. 48 seconds flat. If he went any fast, he'd have to have wings. Everybody's going to be surprised when that horse runs in the race. I know one man in particular that's going to be surprised. <laughs> gotta win this race. Now, haven't we won every year? Everything's going to be fine. Yeah, but it, it's more important this year. Susan, you're riding for the ranch. I bet the ranch again them IOUs I give Scoville. Dad, you didn't. Oh, run it. Mr. I... Kendrick, Susan, they j j j just now entered him. It's a dark horse, and he's riding for Mr. S uh, Mr. S uh, Honesty. Yes. Oh, talk sense, you blather, an idiot. Who's riding what dark horse for who? Mr. S oh, Mr. S uh, Scoville, look. I knew you held a grudge, but I didn't think you would carry it this far. This is not a grudge, Miss Kendrick. I told your father I'd train this horse to beat anything the Kendrick Ranch has or ever had. I did. Today's the day I'll prove it. Did you have to prove it by making that horse a Scoville entry? Miss Kendrick, a year ago, I offered to give this horse to your father. Remember? He could have been your entry. Mr. Kendrick? Looks like I put one over on you. Think so? Well, you listen to this, Mr. Scoville. I got a good horse here, and I'm still going to win. Wouldn't like to make another little bet, would you? You're darn tootin' I would. I'll bet anything I got on the Empress. Dad, don't you think you've bet enough already? This is just a side bet, Miss Kendrick. Boss, you've been keeping this horse undercover for a whole year. Sure have. It's kind of a mean trick, Roy. I mean, racing the Kendricks with a colt that was sired right out of their own stock. <laughs> they ask for it. This race means an awful lot to them, Roy. If they lose it, they lose their ranch, too. The old man bets Scoville the ranch against his IOU. That's not my fault. I don't owe the Kendricks anything. How can you say a thing like that after they got you out of jail? The Kendricks got me out of jail? Miss Susan did. She fronted for you with the magistrate and then fixed it up with her father. Ooh. Why didn't you tell me this before? Because Miss Susan told us not to. All right, Rogers, we all set? I'm sorry, Mr. Scoville, but I'm not riding a race today. You're not riding? You're serious? Yes, sir. Well, you've got to ride. You know that horse wouldn't carry any other jockey, even if I could get one. Do you realize what this will do to me if I scratch trigger? Well, I lose everything I've got in him, and that's some investment. Well, I think I can make up most of your investment, Mr. Scoville. I've been saving my wages. Would you sell Trigger to me? He's not for sale. 
Wait a minute. Maybe we can make a deal. You like that horse, don't you? I sure do. All right, I'll give him to you. A gift. And all I ask you to do is ride and win. These gentlemen here are your witnesses. Is it a deal? Well, naturally, I want to own Trigger, but this is your chance. For winning the race, you get the only son of the Golden Sovereign. Yes, but without the papers to prove it. What proof do you need? You know that he's not the son of the Wild Stallion. What Wild Stallion? Why, the one that uh, had the fight with the Sovereign. What fight, Mr. Scoville? That morning on the range. Didn't you say something about seeing a wild stallion? No, I didn't. Well, that's funny. I thought you did. I must have heard it someplace else. Well, Roy, get out of the post and win, and the trigger's yours. Boys, there was a wild stallion out there on the range the day the Sovereign was shot. And there was a fight between the two stallions. But how did Scoville know that unless he was there? Didn't you say you saw three men out there that day? And one of them was Scoville. Yes, and the other two could have been Hunter and Carson. Thanks for the tip, Roy. Think the boys and me better have a little talk with Mr. Hunter and Mr. Carson? Bill. You boys watch that Kendrick girl on Golden Empress. If she gives Rogers too much competition, get her in a pocket and keep her there. You understand? All right. Number two is Desert Moon. Three is Senuita. Well, Number four is Fire The second is Scoble. Five is Blue Boy. Six, Royal Flush. Seven, Black Beauty. Eight, Lone Star. Nine, Sundown. Ten, Footloose. Eleven is Golden Empress, written by Miss Susan Kendrick. And the last minute Scoble entry, Trigger, number 12, written by Roy Rogers. There they go. Firefly takes the lead on the rail by two eggs. Number one, Fleet Man is second, moving up on the outside, and then it's Golden Empress, Trigger, Black Beauty, Lone Star, and Sundown. They're going into the first turn. It's still Firefly by two lengths. Second is Fleet Man by two lengths. Then Golden Empress, Trigger, Black Beauty, Lone Star, and Sundown. Get up there. Come on, Golden Empress. They're rounding the turn, and here comes Trigger, moving up fast on the outside. Trigger has passed Golden Empress, and he's still moving up. Trigger passes Fleet Man and Firefly. It's Trigger in the lead by two lengths. Firefly second, Fleet Man third, and Golden Empress on the rail. Get over! I'm coming through! Move over! Let me through! Who's stopping you? Three of them two heels, they got shoes in their pocket. What are they trying to do, killer? Got you! Protest! Protest! Golden Empress is trying to get through on the rail. And Rogers and Trigger have moved far out into the lead. Let me oh, Trigger's race now. In second place, it's Fleet Man, Firefly, Trigger. Oh, no, but Rogers is pulling up on Trigger. What's the matter with Rogers? He's pulling up. I'll say he is. Looks like he's got his feet on the dashboard. Trigger, hey, move over and let her through. Try and make a... Okay, you ask for it. Golden Empress gets through on the lane. It's Golden Empress. Atta go, Susan. Atta go. And now they're going into the park turn. Golden Empress has the lead, but Trigger is moving up. It's Golden Empress and Trigger. Golden Empress on the rail. Trigger moving up on the outside. They're turning for home. Golden Empress holding that lead. Trigger moving up relentlessly. Golden Empress and Trigger. Trigger is coming up beside Golden Empress. They're almost neck and neck. It's Golden Empress in front, still by ahead. And now they're fighting for the finish line. It's Golden Empress by ahead. They're head and head. It's Golden Empress on the rail. Trigger on the outside. And Golden Empress wins by a move. That race would have been two yards longer, your horse would have run second. Yeah, but it wasn't two yards longer. Well, you're still at a loss if Rogers hadn't have pulled up to break up that pocket. Ah, eh, some folks ain't never satisfied. Oh, applesauce. Come on. Roy! All I can say is thank you. I know it cost you the race. It cost me a lot more than that. We'll start off even the next time. Thank you, friends. I'm 
almost as proud to have you all with me tonight as I was to win that race today. <laughs> Let's cut out the talking and drooling and eat. Cracky, huh? <laughs> I'm hungry. I tell it, didn't you? Everybody's having a good time, I hope. Oh, yeah. We're having a fine time. I just thought I'd drop around, pay my respects. Nobody can say that Scoville can't take it. Sure, glad to hear that. Ain't you, Bob? Yeah, sure am. Well, I'll be seeing you later. Yeah. Scoville, I'm arresting you. Arresting me? What for? Horse killing. For shooting the Golden Sovereign three years ago. <laughs> Why, you're crazy. I don't think so. I have two of your men, Hunter and Carson, locked up. And they did a bit of talking. That's a lie. Oh, no, it ain't. They talked all right. You better come with me, Mr. Scoville. All right, Sheriff. But I'll clear this up in a minute. Well, Roy, a lifetime with an old codger like me is liable to make a lot of mistakes. I'm asking you to forget all that I've done to you. Forgotten, Mr. Kendrick? Yeah. Come on. Got a little something to show you. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> You own him, Mr. Kendrick? Nope. You own him. Me? <laughs> See, I had a little side bet with Scoble. Looks like I'm just in time. Swell. Here, hold this. <laughs> Take it easy, old boy. We've never lost a father yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> It's a boy. It's another boy. <laughs> 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 when Trigger sees this. <laughs> 